Hello and welcome to SD Kaysen Courses. Today we're continuing our series on Holy Days of Obligation and we're specifically talking about Christmas. I'm not going to go into extreme detail about Christmas. There's so many theories and uh, theological treatises and expositions and everything about Christmas. I'm just going over the main basic facts so you can understand why it is a holy day of obligation. All right, we're going to start as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Christmas is an annual festival commemorating the birth of Jesus Christ. It is observed primarily on December 25th as a religious and cultural celebration among billions of people around the world, a feast central to the liturgical year in Christianity. It follows the season of Advent, which is a season observed in most Christian denominations as a time of expectation, waiting for the birth of Christ, and that begins four Sundays before Christmas. Or the Nativity Fast, which is a the Nativity Fast is a um, tradition in the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church and Eritrean Orthodox Tawahedo Church, which is a period of abstinence and penance practiced before the Nativity. And of course, Christmas initiates the season of Christmas tide, which historically in the Western church lasts 12 days and culminates on the 12th night. Christmas Day is a public holiday in many countries. It is celebrated religiously by a majority of Christians, as well as culturally by many non-Christians, and forms an integral part of the holiday season surrounding it. The traditional Christmas narrative recounted in the New Testament is known as the Nativity of Jesus, and it says that Jesus was born in Bethlehem in accordance with Messianic prophecies, which are just prophecies that talk about Jesus from the Old Testament. When Joseph and Mary arrived in the city, the inn had no room, and so they were offered a stable where the Christ child was soon born, with angels proclaiming this news to shepherds who then spread the word. There are different hypothe hypotheses regarding the date of Jesus' birth, and in the early 4th century, the church fixed a date as December 25th. It is exactly nine months after the Annunciation on March 25th, also the date of the spring equinox. Most Christians celebrate on December 25th in the Gregorian calendar, which is a calendar used in most parts of the world. It went to an effect October 1582 following the papal bull Inter Gravissimas issued by Pope Gregory the 13th, which is why it's called the Gregorian calendar. And most countries civilly use the Gregorian calendar. However, part of the Eastern Christian churches celebrate Christmas on December 25th with the older Julian calendar, which currently corresponds to January 7th in the Gregorian calendar. So there are a few, uh, not a few, there are a number of Eastern churches which celebrate Christmas on January 7th. For Christians believing that God came into the world in the form of a man to atone for the sins of humanity, rather than knowing Jesus' exact birth date, is considered to be the primary purpose of celebrating Christmas. So, so for most Christians, just celebrating his birth is more important than the specific date. And there actually hasn't been any theological dogmatic definition on the exact date of Jesus' birth because for the most part, it's not super important exactly when it was. What is important is that it happened. All right. So the customs associated with Christmas in various countries have a mix of pre-Christian, Christian and secular themes and origins. Popular holiday traditions include gift giving, completing an advent calendar or an advent wreath, Christmas music, caroling, watching Christmas mu movies, viewing a nativity play, which is which our local church does. And it is a play, which it won't let me read, which recounts the story of the nativity of Jesus. It is usually performed at Christmas, uh, the feast of nativity. And a lot of churches use children to perform this play. All right. Some people exchange Christmas cards or attend church services or have a special meal and display various Christmas decorations, including a Christmas tree, Christmas lights, nativity scenes, garlands, wreaths, mistletoe, and holly. Additionally, several related and 
often interchangeable figures known as Santa Claus, Father Christmas, St. Nicholas, and uh, Christkind are associated with bringing gifts to children during the Christmas season and have their own body of traditions and lore. Because gift giving and many other aspects of the Christmas festival involve heightened economic activity, the holiday has become a significant event and a key sales period for retailers and businesses. So yes, the celebration of Christ's birth even makes the economy better. So Christ is giving and <laughs> caring and graceful to even retailers and businesses. Over the past few centuries, Christmas has had a steadily growing economic effect in many regions of the world. And that is the solemnity of Christmas in a nutshell. We're not talking about the theories. We're not talking about theological debates. We're just talking about why we celebrate Christmas as a holy day of obligation and that is because we are commemorating the birth of jesus christ and the western church does it on december 25th because that is nine months after the annunciation which is march 25th and that is with the gregorian calendar however in the julian calendar it will be january 7th so some eastern christian churches will celebrate the nativity on January 7th and it, the reason why why do we celebrate the birth of Jesus it's because God came into the world in the form of a man to atone for the sins of humanity rather and we don't need to know the exact date of Jesus birth we're just celebrating it on this date because that is you know uh, nine months after the celebration of the Annunciation and we can have debates and conversations and things about the dating and if Santa Claus is a good tradition and all these other traditions you know at other times with family and friends who are interested in that for today's purposes why is it a holy day of obligation because we want to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ which is a very important and wonderful thing to do thanks for learning with us and until next time may God bless you forever and don't forget to to check out the other videos in the series of Holy Days of Obligations. God bless. Goodbye.